you could be asked to label the hybridization of each of the atoms in a pretty complex molecule. The background that I need you to know is that hybridization is the reason that some of these carbons have bond angles of 109.5. That's when the atoms around it are in a tetrahedral arrangement. Sometimes around carbon they're at 120 degree angles. That's a trigonal planar arrangement. And sometimes the atoms around carbon are at 180 degrees. That's a, a line, linear arrangement. The way you can calculate the hybridization of each kind of atom, or each atom in this molecule, is to see how many multiple bonds the atom has. If the atom does not make any multiple bonds with any other atoms, then the hybridization of the atom is going to be sp3. The bond angle in that case, if you're asked, is going to be 109.5 degrees. We're counting double bonds and triple bonds here. So, if you have one double bond to the atom and that's it, it's going to be sp2 hybridization. And the bond angles around that atom are going to be 120 degrees. Finally, if you have two double bonds attached to the same atom, or if you have one triple bond on an atom, then the hybridization is going to be sp, and the bond angle is going to be 180 degrees. So, keeping these rules in mind, let's label the hybridization of each atom in that original molecule. Again, we're counting the number of double bonds and triple bonds that it makes. Here's an atom. How many double bonds are there? Well, single bond, single bond, and there's a couple hydrogens here that aren't shown. All single bonds. No multiple bonds must be an sp3 carbon. This one, no multiple bonds. They're all single bonds. That must be sp3. Here's a carbon, though, that has one double bond attached to it. One double bond means it's sp2. No multiple bonds, sp3. This carbon here has one double bond attached to it. It must be sp2, same as this one. This one needs or has one double bond attached to it and that's it. Just one double bond must be sp2. This carbon here has one triple bond attached to it. It must be sp hybridized. And this carbon atom here also has a triple bond attached to it. It must also be sp hybridized. Now, you'll notice I've only labeled the carbons. Carbon's the most common atom you're going to deal with in hybridization. But you can also do this kind of hybridization for nitrogen and oxygen. This oxygen has one double bond attached to it. One double bond means the oxygen, if you're asked, is sp2 hybridized. Same rules as for carbon. And this nitrogen, no double bonds, sp3 hybridized. Easy rules once you know what they actually are. Count the number of double bonds, count the number of triple bonds, look it up in my chart, see what the hybridization is.